In 2006, I was living in a Swiss family Robinson style treehouse in the Amazon in Ecuador, complete with multiple rooms, a zip line, and even an elevator. Pretty extraordinary for a kid, and it mirrors the extraordinary organization Gary Young was building there. Hello and welcome to Young Living's podcast, The YL Drop. My name is Jacob Young, your host. This podcast will provide you with drops of information about Young Living, like stories, history, products, lots of little fun facts, and even more. Young Living is the world leader in essential oils and distributes and produces premium essential oils. We're also going to give you a chance to win this beautiful little box of oils right here. Stay tuned for that. My experience as a boy in Ecuador is just a drop in the bucket of my experiences growing up while my father, Gary Young, and many others built the world's leading essential oil organization. In this episode, we're going to meet Eugenio, who was living in Ecuador just before I was in my treehouse. Eugenio is originally from Peru, and for generations, his family worked in agriculture. But in the early 2000s, that industry collapsed in Peru, and Eugenio, who is married, had to leave to find a way to support his young family. So please welcome to the YL Drop, Eugenio Caruajulca from Peru. Welcome, Eugenio. Hola, Jacob. Gracias por la invitación. Well, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you. And we're very lucky to have you here. And we're also very lucky because we have Eugenio's daughters, Lisette and Nayeli Caruajulca, who are here today. And they're going to help us translate and uh, correlate some of the stories we'll hear today. It may get a little crazy as we try to bounce around from Spanish to English. So bear with us, but we'll do our best. <laughs> and full disclosure, Eugenio, Lisette and Nayeli are family to me. And you'll see what I mean by that. So, Lisette and Nayeli, welcome to the show. Thank Hi. you, Jacob. <laughs> Hi, droppers. Oh, that's right. We also need to get one of those from Eugenio. Eugenio? La cámara más lejitos que se te ve a mitad de la nariz. Papá, hello, droppers. Hello. Hello, droppers. Bueno, that was great. That was fantastic. Yeah. I love it. So, Eugenio, let's start by hearing about you growing up in Peru. Papá, comencemos. You're good. <laughs> comencemos a hablar de cómo tú creciste en Perú. Mira, mis padres nacen en el departamento de Cajamarca. Luego ellos se mudaron. My parents were born in Cajamarca. Then they moved to the jungle. All my life has been dedicated to agriculture. At the time we grow coffee, rice, cacao and banana. I have 11 siblings, nine siblings on my father's side and two on my mother's side. I grew up with my mother and my grandma. One of my favorite stories is when we is when my mom would green chocolate and mix it with panela and give it almost every day. For me, it was a wonderful experience growing up, enjoying the greatness of nature, beautiful landscapes, swimming, the rivers. And when I go out of school, I love to help my mom with a cocoa and coffee plantation. After finishing school, I spent two years in the army outside of the jungle. I decided to return to Naranjos. At the time, I lived with my uncle. That's when I met Rosa, since we were neighbors. We saw each other every day until I asked her Ooh. to be my girlfriend. <laughs> that relationship was born in 1999. In 2000, Lisette was born. In 2002, not 2003, papi. <laughs> wow, what, a, what an amazing story and a long life and your beautiful daughters, uh, Lisette born in 2000 and Naomi in 2002 um, and being married to your wife in 1995, right? No, 1999. 1999. Naomi, okay. no more well, than me. That's great. <laughs> that's, that's why you guys are here to help me with translation. So... After that, and then moving on into 2005, where did your life continue from there? Cuando emigraste en 2005, ¿qué tú hiciste? By the end of the 2025, Rosa and I decided to migrate to Ecuador in search for better work opportunities. 
When we arrived in Ecuador, the job opportunities were not so good, so we decided to accept the first job offer, which was to work as a hotel ward. After two months, when we asked our first bosses to bring our children, the answer was no. And that, that became very sad, and Rosa started to cry. We even thought about going back to Peru. Just days later, I met Gary. One day when we were cleaning his room, Gary arrived with his translator and he greeted me with a strong handshake as we had known each other for years. I felt that he was a good person. When we talked, he asked me about my life, where I grew up, what, li what I like to do. I told him I love agri agriculture. That's when he proposed if I would like to work with him. Since we, he was going to rent the building where I was working, he offered a job as a distillery and I also offered a quality of life. He told me about his project and I said, that was the first conversation that we had. The second time was with him and Mary where he asked us if I had children and how many I had. We told him that I have two girls who were in Peru with their grandma and aunt. Gary looked at me and told me, family is the most important thing and your girl have to be with you. Gary gave me his cell phone and told me to call my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. I um, tell her to pack my girls' bags because they were coming with us. Gary gave us a van to pick up our girls at the border. That moment was an immense joy for Rosa and me. Wow. That's just, I, I love this story. It, yeah, me uh, too. almost gives me kind of leaky eye syndrome. And it, family was everything to my dad. And he agreed that family was the most important, no matter who you are, and that you should always make sure that family is the most important. So I love that story. And now... I, I was able to meet Lisette and Ayeli after that, and we are lifelong friends, and I consider them as my sisters as we grew up together. We played in the treehouse and the pool. Uh, we pulled each other's hairs a few times, too. <laughs> so, no, but, but it's been great. And I think um, the fact that you had background in history working in agriculture and that my dad placed you as our distillations operation manager was the perfect for, for you. And uh, I, I always love these stories of how people end up meeting my dad. Just yeah. kind of random, kind of weird. Um, but I really like it. And hearing that he was coming to the hotels very late at night and leaving very early in the morning sounds exactly like, like him. Yeah, and um, I'm pretty sure he said the following saying to you as it was one of his most favorite sayings and famous sayings um, when he would go to Spanish countries. And that was, mi español es tan bueno que nadie puede entenderlo. <laughs> Which basically meant, yeah, my Spanish is so good that nobody can understand me. Um, and so that's just, that's awesome that you got to meet him that way. One thing that I would like you to share and touch up on a little bit is the school and the foundation. Uh, about the foundation, Gary told me about making a school to improve the education of many children in Changon. And I was very happy, not just me, all the workers in that time. That project was realized in 28, 29. The academy is where my girls graduated. Yes, now the academy has higher school and a school. Meeting Gary was a blessing. My life took an unexpected turn. Now my family and I have a good job, a good education. Thanks, Gary and Mary. We are very grateful. It, it's an amazing school, and I had the wonderful opportunity of um, participating and going there for a few years before heading back to the United States. Um, it's, it's just an amazing school and an experience of everything that was constructed and built, the friendships and relationships that were created. I love it. Ecuador mm -hmm. is such a beautiful place with so it many is. beautiful aromatic plants, um, which all come in this little box right here. And speaking of this little box right here that we hinted at in the beginning, we're going to break right now to our quick commercial break and tell you how you can win this special little box right here. All right. Now with this little box comes this beautiful little cover right here that displays a beautiful picture of our farm down in Ecuador. And I just want to show you what's inside this little box right here, this little kit. 
four oils that come specifically from the farm in Ecuador. So we have Incan Melissa, which is new this year. Mm -hmm. We have Ecuadorian Ilangalang. And it has a beautiful little nickname called Siga Me Siga Me, which uh -huh. means follow me, follow me because of its intoxicating scent. We also have Palo Santo, which is my favorite. It's called the Frankincense of Ecuador. And we have Baikotea, which is brand new and actually from the rainforest in Ecuador, very close to the Peruvian border as well. So if you'd like to win this kit right here, all you have to do to enter to win this is type hashtag Ecuador. With that being said, when you type hashtag Ecuador, you'll be entered into the giveaway and a random winner will be selected the following Tuesday on the Wild Drops Instagram page. Hope you win it. And we are back. Um, Eugenio, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on our show here. Do you have any last words or final thoughts that you'd like to share? ¿Tienes algunos um, pensamientos o palabras finales que quieras decir? Like you your English better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> It's a memory my dad with Gary. So one day, Gary asked us if we can stay longer working with him. And we say yes. Um, but it wasn't a couple hours. It was until the night. And we are starving. And we remember that he was, dri he was driving and working by himself. And when he asked us to come, he have a barbecue with corn and cheese and juice and he give to us a, to eat. So my co-workers and I were so impressed because we don't have that kind of person in Ecuador. We were, wow, this is our boss. He ate with us in the same place. We were, again, that's the one of the biggest memory all the workers have with Gary and we are so thankful with that. Yes, because he treats people with love. Yeah, just um, he's very kind and always made sure that everyone was taken care of and giving everybody a big feast does sound <laughs> something like He was a good chef. Yeah, yeah very good he chef. Was. Yeah. Made corn and cheese for everybody. He loved corn, I think. So. Yes, he did love corn. <laughs> Well, Eugenio, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to come on to our show and to share your stories. Lisa and Ayeli, say goodbye. Goodbye, papi. <laughs> thank you, Bye. Eugenio. <laughs> yes, thank you. We will see you later. Take care. Bye. Take <laughs> care. All right, so I want to finish up this episode by talking and sharing a few stories um, from our experiences, uh, Lisa and Ayeli and I's. And um, so... All of us remember some of the fun, fun memories that we've had. Um, Nayeli wanted to share <laughs> one of the very first house that we stayed at at Lucho's, which was yeah, yeah. um, kind of Kilometer. Yeah, yeah. So why, why don't you want to share that story in English? Uh, so I remember that we were swimming. Jacob said, Joseph and I, and I didn't know how to swim. But I tried to do my best, and I almost <laughs> died, so Jacob came <laughs> <laughs> and tried to save me. Yeah, so, so what happened is we had a life preserver on Nayeli, and Nayeli ended up going out into the deep end. Uh -huh. Somehow the life preserver came off, and so Nayeli started to drown, and so I went to swim up underneath her to try and push her up and out of the water, she ended up kicking me in the face <laughs> and knocking me unconscious. So both of us were drowning in the pool at the exact same time. Um, and then uh, the guard who was there ended up grabbing Nayeli by her hair and pulled her <laughs> up and out of the pool. And then came in and grabbed me and pulled me out of the pool. So yeah, that, that was lots of fun. Yeah. I tried to rescue a person and they ended up trying to drown me for it. So... <laughs> Do you have any fun stories you want to share? Um, maybe we have one about the motorcycle. Oh, oh the four-wheeler? Uh-huh. Oh, Jacob yeah. always was a crazy driver. Yes. yes. You're still a crazy driver. I'm not that crazy. Of I'm a very reasonable driver on the road. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he was driving, and then he went to the bananas trees. So... 
I was driving on the road. Yeah. There's a stretch of road to the farm um, where you have a, our banana plantation off to the left and our dam that we called the Hoover Dam off to our right. And it had just rained and it had rained really hard at that there was like rock exposed on the road. And I was on one four wheeler, the set, Niali and Joseph were all on the other one. Mm-hmm. We decide to race each other down this road. Like yeah. always. Like always, yeah. But <laughs> always Jake could win, so. Yeah. <laughs> and so what had happened is I hit this rock that was exposed and it threw me off. The four wheeler went off to the right into the banana plantation trees, like completely tumbled, flipped everything. I fell off, did a, a few front flips on the road. I mean, I probably slid, what, like 30, 40 feet before coming to a stop? Yeah. yeah. Road rash all up and down my back and everything. It um, was funny because we were so scared, so we didn't want to tell our parents, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we tried to, no, to keep we, it like a cigarette. We, we tried to hide it, and I don't remember what we told them. Um, but we, we told them something dumb happened. About, yes. I think I like slipped in, like, so we in the used, pool. I remember that day we used pants and and everything like to cover, you know? <laughs> yep. We used lots of lavender, lots of helichrysum. Yeah. So what are your guys' earliest memories from Ecuador and Peru? Well, I don't have memories in Peru. All my memories in Ecuador because... Well, I, I still have some memories from Peru. I remember when I was with my grandmother, Harvin's Cafe. Mm-hmm. Which, coffee? Har- har- harvesting coffee. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So when I went with my grandmother to harvest coffee i always try to help her because they pay you depending on how much you have mm-hmm. half so i mean i try to help her but i have i had like a little back mm-hmm. but i always was asleep and waiting her to <laughs> to yeah wow what a what a great helper you are <laughs> yes i know <laughs> they give me a little back mm-hmm yeah, back. Okay. Yeah, it, they give me a so little back. So did they pay you? Yeah, my on? grandmother paid me for my bag. Like, well, how much were you paid per bag? It was one, one soles. Yeah, two soles. One, that is like a one dollar. One dollar. Yeah. How big was the bag? Like it's a, a small one. So it was like ten pounds, fifteen pounds yeah, of coffee be. beans. Yes, that's, that's a good amount of coffee beans. Yeah. <laughs> and what's I guess your earliest memory yeah. living in Ecuador? I just remember spending time in the Lucha house with you guys. Yeah. That said, like... You yeah. remember when Jacob was trying to teach us English? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we love you, but, but you that, know... That was in the farm. That was in the farm. Yeah, but... He's trying to be a teacher. Yeah. Jacob wants everything perfect. So we are very young. So our pronunciation is still, you know... And enunciation wasn't perfect. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was very strict. Yeah, yeah I, so I, we I make, like... Um, how do you say? A promise? Promise? Like no, a deal. We make oh, yeah, a, deal. a deal. So he has to speak Spanish when he is in Ecuador, and we have to speak English, English when we, we are here. When but I'm still speaking Spanish with him. Okay. Well, growing, all of us have grown up together, and we went to Young Living Academy together. Mm-hmm. What were your guys' favorite memories of going to school together? When you when we used to play basketball. Oh, baseball. 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 He was a good one in baseball. Yeah. And I like to see him how he play with his dad. Yeah. So we played with Gary so many times. Oh, yeah. It was really good. Um, but you were, you were I, the best. I mean. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember when we first started to bring up baseball as a sport at the mm-hmm. school, all the terrible equipment that we had. <laughs> Um, half of the gloves were broken and didn't work and they were like way too big because we were all like, you know, we and 10 Nicole. years old and we were using gloves that were made for adults. All yeah. the bats were super big. Like all the equipment was super big. So it was funny to see little kids in such a big equipment. It, it was awesome. Going back to earlier, right? You know, your, your father talked about how we all are family. And it's true. We really are. We lived in the same house for quite a while. Tell me your guys' side of the story from that. How did you like that? Well, you know, it was funny because we love it to play and you, and we start to gel and gel. But sometimes, you know, our parents were, <laughs> were working, but we didn't care about that. Yeah. So one day I remember someone say, silent. And we say, okay. Yep. <laughs> that was my mom. We were yeah. running around playing tag. She was on a call or something like that. Yeah. I remember her storming out of the room just... Can you guys be silent for two minutes? And and we, you know, it was like, 
Yeah. Okay. okay, we can do that for yep. two minutes, you know. <laughs> we always came over to the main house at the farm and played lots of games, night games, mainly night games. And we'd stay up to what? Like when one? we do karaoke? Yes. Do you remember? Karaoke? Yeah. We also did our fashion. Fashion, yeah. yeah. Our fashion stuff. We, yeah, the fashion stuff was great because we'd all do our hair, we would get in nice clothes, and we'd have a fashion show competition. Yeah. Joseph did the wildest hairs. He and had some really good hairs. Café yeah. Chocolate. And Café Chocolate. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Café Chocolate is, is. Uh, like a down by the hanky panks kind of hand game. Very, very similar. Um, except your goal is just to hit the other person as hard as you can on the hand. So it's kind of like a game of, of mercy. It's it's really entertaining and fun. But I think it would be great if you could share uh, with our audience what you two are doing right, right now. So we said if you want to share kind of what you're doing right now. And then Nayeli. Well, I discovered in 2016 what I want to become because I came here to uh, Utah. So I said, I like that team. It was supply chain. So I was, I, re I want supply chain, I want marketing, everything in one career. So when I came to Ecuador, my mind was like, you have to start international business. International business. So yeah. I'm starting international business. I and you're working uh, with... Uh, uh, I'm doing my internship here, so yeah. I'm very grateful with John Living and your parents. Yeah. And, and, and who are you working with on, on supply chain to learn? Chris Samudio. He's helping. And Kobe. Yeah. And Ayeli, well, what are you doing? I just graduated in February. I'm taking a little vacation. <laughs> and <laughs> a I little, are you sure it's a little vacation? <laughs> and I came here to learn more English and now I'm visiting J. Cole and Lisette. Yeah. Yeah, having and uh, talk about why you have been visiting Massachusetts these last few oh. months. I, well, one of my goals was came here to U.S. to learn more English mm -hmm. and I went to my sponsor house in Massachusetts and their family is so amazing. They don't speak a little Spanish is all English and I'm trying to understand everything. It's just amazing and spend time there and I'm just so thankful with oh. them and with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Jenny is the best. Yeah. yeah. We have the opportunity to meet her, her here in the in United yeah. States yeah. in 2016. And, mm -hmm. and Jenny is Nayeli's sponsor. Yes. Nayeli said and sponsor. I'm, and I'm just going to quickly clarify, for those of you who don't know what a sponsor is, um, you can go onto the Young Living Foundation's website at younglivingfoundation.org. Uh, you can click on sponsor a child and it's exactly how it sounds. You can sponsor a child that is currently enrolled at Young Living Academy. You can help them buy books, pencils, um, school equipment, what kind of stuff, or you can help pay for their internship Trips likely set and um, for trips for Nayeli so she can come to the, the US. And one thing that she didn't mention is she's also kind of doing her own little internship because she wants to maybe become a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jenny's husband, right? Jenny's husband or her dad, uh, you've been going uh, to visit their office, right? No. No. Oh, no. Stop there, Jacob. Oh, okay. Stop there. <laughs> <laughs> she, well, the plan was that. Yeah, but oh, the plan the, was that. Yeah, the, the plan, plan was, was that. that. But ah, and okay. I couldn't do that because of the COVID. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that was the plan. Yeah, that was so. the plan. So you'll just have to come back and do another internship when you can. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We love you, Jenny. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for coming on. Um, and thank you to your dad for all that he's done um, and just continuing the hard work. I absolutely love you guys. You guys you guys are great. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of The YL Drop. Don't forget to oil up. This is Jacob Young, dropping out. Take care. <laughs>